Hello, good morning. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee. I think it's number 186 this morning. Uh, there's a bunch of people here already, so <laughs> thank you. That's ace. It's a nice change. So you're all back. Um, so firstly, apologies, I didn't do a show last week. I wasn't sure if I had plans or not. And then the plans didn't happen, but I thought, well, it's, it's bank holiday. Um, so my excuse was that people would be doing other stuff. Uh, so I used it as an excuse just to not not to do it. <laughs> That's it. I wasn't really doing anything. Well, I was uh, I was actually playtesting a secret game um, last Sunday. So I did that um, instead. But well, I was uh, I was actually playtesting a secret game um, last Sunday. So I did that um, instead. But I thought like just going to not do it this week. Don't have to. So. Um, so yeah, apologies for that last week. Um, yeah, just I was tired. <laughs> I was tired. I think I'd been a bit wibbly the week before as well. And I thought, I'll just, I'll leave it this week. Um, but it means I have loads of news and things to talk about. Lots of learning for you this Sunday morning as well. Um, the mug reveal. Not sure if we've got, oh, there we got Gary and he's always wanting his mug reveal. Got my oldie timey mug. Although it's not oldie timey, but it just looks oldie timey. Um, because that will tie in with what uh, what I've been up to this week, oldie timey things. And mum can confirm she did come on some oldie timey things. I've got all these notes. <laughs> the back. Oh, I thought you'd be able to see through it. The paper quality is too good. So yeah, it's been two weeks. Two weeks after the show. Um, hello, anyone new? We've got all the, all the regulars. See all the usuals. I'm going to put that. Sorry. I'm just... I forgot how to do it. I've had a week off. I forgot how to how to do a Sunday morning coffee. So, what have I been up to? The big um, oh, we've got Andrea's got Circle of Doom. Hopefully, that's just him. <laughs> um, do let me know if you also get a Circle of Doom. Um, so the big uh, the big sort of task that I've been doing that's been a very long task the last couple of weeks. Whew, it was just him. <laughs> Not today. Um, I think I manifested it away for you. Um, uh, before I forget, hang on, <laughs> get some live reaction. Before I forget, uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, because the chat's moving relatively fast today. Andrea says, have you seen the Blood and Crowns Kickstarter? Mostly mentioning because they're doing Joan of Arc. What? Have a look. Blood and Crowns. Is it Hundred Year War? Oh, Firelock Games. No. See, this is one of the reasons I'd never done a Joan of Arc. <laughs> yes, I like everyone's, everyone's doing it. Oh no, I shouldn't look really because if, <laughs> if it ends up, so you can't win with this stuff because if if there is a picture of it and it looks like what um. Oh, you're not doing. They're not doing minis. There we go. It's good. But if they were, um, if um, if it did look like what I was going to do, then I'd have seen it before I designed mine. And if it didn't, and I changed, I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah. Oh, they're not. So they're not doing. Mm. So it's another. Let's have a little look. It looks really pretty. Card decks. So wait, uh, oh no, they do. They have got a mini. Oh, that's that's okay. Um, no, they've got a STL, which looks lovely, but it is different to what I had in mind. So whew, that's okay. Although to be fair, what I have got in mind is pretty standard. That I think um, isn't going to be that out there. Oh, that's nice size. That's good. Whew. Oh, so that could be a good uh, another good reason to noise. That looks pretty. Just me looking at a Kickstarter now. <laughs> That's it. That's the show. Oh no, no, I like I like seeing what else is out there. Um, yeah, yeah. What I am gonna do, um, well, will like, say once I start doing the actual design for her, which will be soon. Um, I want that to be quite classical anyway, um, but I very much want to have her with the banner because it's very much the, you know, <laughs> the banner, and that's a use I think she'd have in a game quite a bit too because. Um, She's doing that like way. I had it with some of with some of the community minis where 
I'd see someone's artwork that looked really similar to what I had in mind. Now it's like, oh no, uh, but it's just, you get to the same conclusions on the same, you know, the same references and stuff. Which is one of the reasons I quite like having the blog because it shows where I've journeyed through rather than just, because I know there are companies that do just nick people's artwork and make them into minis and stuff like that. So, uh, so that's short ramble. Of course, Dave is drinking behind me. I was just out of shot there, just out of shot. Oh Lord, I may have to show you the horrible thing they did. To, they they did to the ratties. So um, so yeah, we'll actually be talking a bit more about Joan of Arc in a bit because she is one of the community minis, which is on the on the discussion. Um, so I forgot my list. So I've been preparing for the release of the undead gribblies. So they're already all on the website. Morning, Lil. Morning, Lil. Uh, so the the stuff from the last Kickstarter. To get it ready for shops, I need to make sure all the packaging is done, which is photographing them to a decent standard, um, then doing the graphics by putting them onto the, you know, we'll have the picture packaging, getting all that ready, getting that ordered, um, making sure I've got stock of the new things, uh, counting all the stock, making sure um, I've got some restocks coming of any of the extra popular bits. Because when I order for the Kickstarter, I order a bit extra with stock in mind, and then any late. Um, pledge manager people and all that I've usually got stock for them as well so some stuff I'm very well stocked on other bits so I oh, need to get a few more of those like turkey man so getting very focused on that that kickstart again that rounded off um and getting it into shops you need to get it into shops so the other quest is to um change all the order forms so I've got order forms for all the shops so I've been updating them putting all the new bits in double checking because it's one of those you know excel sheets for the different formulas and stuff so just double checking they're all correct sending them out to all the, the retailers and having a little catch up with them because i don't just go here's the form i like to you know see how they're doing so sending all those out catching up with the retailers uh, it takes longer than you think because there's quite a lot in that new one um, and just tinkering tinkering with the images um getting them getting them approved for print and all that does take a while, especially when they messed me messed me about. They didn't. They had an error. My printers had an error and I had to, to do a bit of complaining, but we sorted it out. I was, I was almost, almost going Karen, but we had a nice, uh, we had a nice understanding by the end um, and complimented each other on being awesome. So that's, that's how customer service, good customer service works. Um, Jez, how's my noggin? It's almost better. It's almost better. I'm still just taking it a little bit easy, but otherwise it's fine. It's still like a little background dull ache, but I'm not really thinking about it. So that's a good thing if it's not bothering me enough that I'm not thinking about it. And thank you for the concern. It has been a long time now. It's mad it takes that long. I will be far more cautious of my head now. Mm -mm. What we got here right right i put a little bit of honey in this um this coffee today Ooh. Ooh. so i've been doing all that boring bits uh, and daniel can see now yes um in fact daniel <laughs> before you go if you do end up having to to dash your name was mentioned in our house yesterday hang on let me just scooch here Ooh. Get that closed off. Um, I won't get the full box. Not, not you directly. <laughs> um, and he's got a new board game, and he said if he's left it by the sofa, he said in case you wanted to show it off during the live stream. And I said, Oh, Daniel will be all over that. Um, I won't talk about it much because it's <laughs> it's adults in nature. Um. And I know it's a family-friendly show, but this game looks amazing. And so we're going to be playing this. Um, it's called Gay Sauna. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, and yes, that's all I need to say. <laughs> that's all I need to say on it. I can't show you any more of it because it's all rude. Um, but it looks hilarious. Um, who's the company? Reroll Works. And they've got the, the old progress flag there. Woo! 
Um, so I'm sure on my, not the bad squiddo, um, in case anyone doesn't know, I've got my personal Twitter account, which is um, uh, at Raging Annie. So I'm sure when we play this, I will be tweeting. <laughs> Every time I look at it, it's just full of puns and entendre and just straight up, <laughs> straight up uh, shenanigans. What's, oh no, I've got to stop looking at it now. So yeah, it looks it looks like a wicked game actually, and it looks quite fun. So um, yeah, I just wanted to show it off because it, it's like good quality and everything. No idea what it plays like. We were going to play it last night, but I was too tired. This is where all the viewers go. Not even double on Tom, just on Tom Drake's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely don't Google um, flat out gay sauna. Um, play sauna board game would bring it up, I think. Um, but considering I don't play games enough, I went, yes, I will play that. So I should have put that in the um, the text that we've got. You know, Joan of Arc, Mary Fields, Ada Lovelace information, a new Kickstarter, Gay Sauna. So, yeah. I'll stop talking about Gay Saunas. <laughs> I did want to show it off, though. Has anybody else bought the Gay Sauna board game? Hmm. I showed mum it, she didn't want to play it. What else have we got? I've been sorting out, for talking of shops, I've been sorting out some of my shops. One of the shops took a 35 kilogram order. That's going tomorrow, I've got it all packed up. It's quite the beast, six boxes. Um, and that's really good. And I'll tie that in with what I posted in Baggy's Cave earlier, because somebody had showed, uh, I can't remember the name of the company. Uh, but they'd they'd saw some bad squiddo out in the wild, and I said how it makes me really happy because quite early on in bad squiddo, somebody whose opinion I respected <laughs> said, which I no longer do, um, said that my range the bad squiddo stuff isn't that good, um, but it's actually a bit crap, and the only reason people buy stuff is because I use my charms and trick people into buying it. Um, which you know I do, but um, <laughs> and it gave it took me a while to get you know get properly into sorting out with retailers because I thought well if I'm not there to do my weird woman mind games on people maybe it is all a terrible idea and people don't want it, um, which we all know is ridiculous. Uh, so now even though it's been years and years, when I see other people having val other shops having value to bad squiddo basically you know like each time they order i'm like oh thank you and they say no we're, we're, it sells really well people love it i'm like yes and even though i know that it's that sort of validation so that always makes me really happy um because it does you know one bad comment can just stick whereas you get a million good comments and of course your brain's like nah i won't remember that one uh, so yeah seeing other other people do well um makes me really happy as well um, and yeah and then, and then I can just use my weird feminine mind powers to get a few more extra sales I guess it's so weird isn't it it's so weird when people go do you get any problems um in in the industry as a woman no <laughs> not at all it's absolutely fine just like men make miniatures and uh men make miniatures and sell them and they're awesome but a woman makes miniatures and sells them. It's because of some weird, like, trickster thingy. So, so bizarre, isn't it? It's so bizarre. But yeah, so people stocking Bad Squiddo makes me super happy. So I had a few trade orders. And then once I told, sent out the emails with, Ooh, we've got new stuff, had a few more of those to pack up. So mum's been helping me with that. Woohoo! So that's awesome. So it's been very managerial sort of work we've got 30 people i think it's because i mentioned the gay sauna i can't get that's going to be my new target audience um that's what we got oh, oh carol carol did a good pun yes that's a good pun. you should definitely take that to uh to your gaming club <laughs> that would be excellent um so in the week um mum got stuck here she was uh she was going to be here thursday to friday and then upon coming up here, <laughs> upon coming up here, um, the trains are on strike a lot all year. Um, still hasn't been sorted. 
Um, so uh, mum was up here and couldn't get back. So she she had to stay till Saturday. So I said, oh, no, that means we'll have to because I didn't have enough for her to do um, for the full two days. So I said, um, hmm, we'll, um, <laughs> um, ooh, we'll have to go somewhere. So what I've been wanting to do for ages is go to see the Ada Lovelace tomb. So I thought I won't feel bad like I've had a day off then because it's research for community miniatures. And uh, <laughs> Carl Burks, hello. Just tuned in halfway through a case on it. Once you're clicked on the right channel, it's definitely the correct channel. Hello, welcome. <laughs> we do talk about history as well, also. Um, Andy says there's hypnosis hidden in the showcases to get people to compulsively buy the miniatures. Yeah, some like feminine witchcraft afoot, no doubt. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we went uh, to Hucknall, which is where Ada Lovelace is buried, as is Lord Byron. Um, it's the Byron family tomb. And I don't drive, so and the trains were down. But very nicely, Ada said, when I die, could you bury me within a short walking distance of a tram stop? So that I so that Annie can come and visit me in the future, which was very nice of her. Mm -mm. So if ever you want to go and you're in the area, uh, the trams that run through Nottingham, the fi final destination of one of them is Hucknall. And it is, uh, what was it mum, say five, ten minute walk, maybe ten minutes um, to, to the church from there. So we did that in the morning. The trams were running, the trains weren't. Uh, so she's buried in this very old church. And uh, so we went in there. And the first bit, oh, oh, I'll put some pictures up on the, um, when I do the main post on Community Minis. Uh, the main bit was sort of super wooden and old, and there was this really old cross on the top of it. And then we got in, and a, a chap came out, I think he was called George. Me and mum argued after this. I thought he said he was called George. She said she thought he said Andrew. Um, and then we both doubted ourselves. So I'm calling him George for now, but I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm hoping I've been looking for clues online. Sure, he said George. Um, but this this chap gave us a, a personal tour around the church. It was really lovely. Um, so told us all different parts of the you know the history of the church that it was originally an eighth century church, and um, so then we we walked. Yeah, just showed, showed us all like the little details. There was the old Norman font. The massive wood, uh, wood um, lead, lead and stone font. I'm sure that didn't cause any any issues for people at any point. Um, and then there's the the Byron tomb, but it's underneath. So it's under it's the vault. So it's underneath the uh, main section. I don't know what it's called in a church. You know, you've got where all the pews are, and then there's the little steps. There's the <laughs> there's the vicary bit, um, and at the back you have your choir maybe so it's kind of that like raised bit <laughs> that's where it was um he did say which part was the was the various saunas <laughs> that was a joke i was gonna make and then i, I decided against it because <gasps> i've got my record number of viewers and I, i'm sure i'm never sure if it's because i've mentioned this sauna or if uh, they'll leave so anyway, so Ada and and Lord Byron, and I think it was Lord Byron's mum and a, a child uh, were, were all in this bit, but it's underneath. And of course, in my brain, uh, I was very disappointed the first time I went to the British Museum because I was looking for the area where in the mummy returns, they raised the mummy back and I couldn't find it. And then afterward, because I knew they'd filmed at the British Museum. So I just assumed it was there and it wasn't. It's, it was a set. Uh, so looking for a vault in a church, I was thinking of Indiana Jones and I thought that we'd be able to see the Ada Lovelace X marks the spot and pickaxe our way down below, find her, open her coffin and she'd have a, a clue or a note um, and I'd be able to go on a great adventure. But unfortunately, he said the last time it was opened was uh, 1936 when they went down there. The technical wording is the vicary pit, the fungopolis. Um, 
So I did offer him a bribe, which wasn't very, um, very holy. But I did say, go on for a fiver. Could you show me down there? And he wouldn't. Um, so I did test his faith because he might have thought about it. He might have thought, oh, a fiver, we can go down there. I might offer him £10 next time to see if we can go down there. Uh, but there's lots of, obviously, lots of memorial bits around there and information, different plaques. It's very popular in Greece, Byron is. So there's all these Greek gifts and sculptures and things around. Um, it's obviously very Byron focused because he's the more famous one. Um, the poet, a bit of a bit of an ass, really, <laughs> but obviously very, very famous. So there's all that Byron family bits and bobs around. Um, and it was quite nice. You know, it's it's weird, isn't it? Because it, you know, um, it's just that this underneath where I was standing are some remains of someone about to make a mini of. Uh, so the the people were lovely, and they said, "Oh, while you're here, would you like some cake and some cake and coffee?" And never turn down church cake. I think they, they bless it or something. It's always amazing. So like the little old ladies in churches that make the cakes. So we had some, it was, ooh, it was like orange cake. So we sat um, sat and had some cake and coffee with them. It was really nice. Um, oh yeah, mum's got some some info there. Lord Byron and Ada Lovelace both died at 36. Spooky. Um, so I'm going to go... <laughs> Very little context for bribing church guards and digging up tombs. <gasps> See, it's a controversial show today. A spiver, a sucky sweetie and a squiddo mini, bribe and a half. Yes, what do you? Um, so I ended up ch uh, chatting to a load of those people and I was telling them about bad squiddo and that um, when we go back, um, I said, I'll be back in a few months. Um, and I'm going to bring the little lady to Lovelace Mini um, so that she can meet her. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It just seems like a nice thing to do. But the people there were were really happy about that idea because obviously that's where they're, they're around all the time, isn't it? So, and I was saying about one of the ladies was like, don't tell, don't tell anyone, just all your viewers on your show. Just like, I prefer Ada Lovelace. Yeah, so I'm making a little mini of her. So I'm, once I've got her, um, I'm going to bring the painted one to show them, um, and I'm going to let them have a have one of the casts with the little cards on, a bit of Marty art as well. Well, that'd be really nice. Um, so it's like a field trip. I like doing field trips because it gets me out and about, gives me some ideas going. Um, you know, obviously it's not essential to the designing of the mini, um, but it, it's just that fuller experience. And because she's only it's like forty minute tram, I think. Um, it's not far. Um, it's just nice. Um, it's something to do. There's something to do. Visit some corpses, you know. Um, and it has got my idea cogs going a bit as well. And uh, and it meant that we got a bit of time out in Huck. No, have I brought this back? What's this? And then whilst we were um, whilst we were. In, in, whilst we'd left to go there, I hadn't realised I had a metal delivery on the way. So I did have work for mum. So after we'd hung around Hucknall for a little bit, we went back to the office and we worked late. We didn't get back there till later. But whilst we were in Hucknall, we saw the first market we've actually seen in ages. Woo -woo! <laughs> so I bought loads of bulbs. Different bulbs, crocus bulbs. Snowdrop bulbs, 15 for three pounds, little snowdrop bulbs. Facts, I've just got to show you whilst we're on the subject of bulbs. It is a very back and forth show today. Wait there. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. I got this. <laughs> I got this as well. It's a dibber, I think, or a dipper. Um, the, the guinea pigs have licked it because I put it in to do that to them, and then they went. Plant them bulbs. Also, the brand's ambassador, and I've, I've now called it the ambassador. So you could say, meet the ambassador. 
<laughs> I thought you just wooed a bag of onions. <laughs> See you, Andrea. Um, so there, yeah. I got that, and then I got the beast. I got the big one for the big bulbs. So that's what I'll be doing later. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we went um, we went back to uh, back to the office after that. Uh, Mum did a bunch of because I'd already kind of wrote the day off as office day. I thought I don't want to just sit on the computer because that's most of the job is sitting on the computer. So Mum was packing the restock into the blister packs, and I decided to resort the entirety of the card organisation. And it killed me, I think. It was more of a task than I thought. So those picture cards, um, those picture cards that you get on each package, I've got them across the range. So I've got at least 600, I think, different ones. And I store them. I have about that much of each in thickness because they're quite thin, so you get a lot, quite a few hundred in there. And I store them in these cardboard CD cases in order. And they're all arranged by um just weeping. They're all arranged uh by their code. So obviously MLS, um BFM, FZ. So all the little sub ranges have got their own code. And of course they're all colour coded boxes as well. So um sometimes I won't have cards ready for new bits or some get out of stock or just for whatever reason, there's some of the boxes are only half full and I was running out of box space. This is quite a boring task, but it's another of the like things that happen in the bad squiddy land. Um, uh, what's it? Uh, brain. Where did the brain go? It's gone. Um, so I decided to consolidate them. And some, I never used to elastic band them, so sometimes the little divider had moved and they were all sort of messed up. So I was just going through them all in order, relabeling the boxes, elastic banding them up, consolidating it all. And uh, and yeah, uh, it took me hours <laughs> and I was dead by the end of it. Um, but I got to chat to mum as I was doing it. So she was one side of the table doing the blistering and I was sorting all the cards out on the other side. So that was one of those jobs that I needed to do for ages, um, but they, you know, they're not urgent jobs. So it was quite nice to get that done um, and still be doing something because you know what I'm like. Don't like resting. We're doing that. Um, Pete's bulbs did good, but we did puppy puppies poppies. They just ended up feeding the birds. The birds are happy though. Uh, if you put, it's not a fail safe, but if you put um, compost on top of it. Um, it helps some, but they will take a load of it. Um, I did some good, good luck with poppies. But yeah, I've got birds, squirrels, the hedgehog. And I've only seen one rat, but I know he's there. So whenever I put seeds down, uh, a proportion of them do feed all of those. But some live, some go on to live. So I just put loads down. Or I put distractor stuff down while I'm putting the precious but I don't, I don't mind so much because I'm like, well, it's all nature, I guess. It's all in the, what's the word? Biodiversity. Yeah, squirrels are cool, but also vandals. Mm. What else have we got? So let me just cross these up. 34 people, look at that. Uh, da, da. Oh, Ada Lovelace, I uh, didn't give any context. If, so we're doing a community, she's been voted for in community minis, but we haven't uh, done any prep for her yet. But I've been side researching her, but I haven't done the solid research. When I start doing my blog, I'll probably do her next. Um, but she's uh, credited as being the first computer programmer uh, and did lots of cool stuff. Um, sort of like mother of AI. If only she knew. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Carol said we're generally less than two metres away from a rat if we live in towns. Yeah, Jill lives on the third floor, only have wee window boxes. It was fun to watch them, but I cursed every time they took them up. Yeah, <laughs> that's me trying to reseed part of the lawn, running out going, oi, just let it seed. You can have some other stuff instead. Uh, so yeah, uh, she, she worked, uh, Ada worked under Charles Babbage, who is obviously much more famous being a man and all. 
Uh, the other bit of research I was doing was Mary Fields. If you haven't seen my blog, you should. Under there is a link to the Community Miniature Project. <laughs> and uh, I think I'm going to chill today. It's been a very on week. Um, so there's a link to that. Uh, I've done my write-up of Mary Fields, who's really interesting. I'd only heard of her just before the Community Project, basically. Um, she's she's designed, but I'm going to change it. I'm going to change it based on your feedback, which makes sense. So, woo, community needs in action. She was the first black woman post, well, male carrier, they're called in America, male carriers. I think she was the second woman. Um, and the most outstanding thing that I think is that she was 64 when she did it. And I've put more information in the blog, my thoughts on it. The fact that at first you kind of like, well, wow, you're a post woman, you know, compared to, you know, someone who's out there on the front line hacking people down with their axes or whatever. Um, it's like, oh, a post woman, great. And then you read into it, you're like, oh, this is like um, Kevin Costner in that film. <laughs> Postman. You're not just going round in your little Royal Mail van putting stuff through the door. So they are also heroes. Um, this is in um, still still a bit wild west times, uh, going up on your own as a woman, as a black woman, not long after slavery is abolished. So it's only really you know legally abolished. There's a lot of people against that still. Um, a lot of mega mega racism going on there. Um, so you're a black woman on your own going out into the sticks to deliver mail, which is really important. Um, lots of stuff that's very stealable. So yeah, that's why in the the main photo of her that's shown around, she's got a she's got a rifle. Uh, what's it? It's the one. It's the one from Shaun of the Dead. She's got a Winchester in the in the picture that's very common. Um, but she more likely uh, was more well known for using a shotgun. So I'm doing a shotgun in mine. But she had a shotgun and a revolver. And then I said multiple. I think she had more guns as well. Because you have to. So all these band groups of bandits, you get wolves, all these wild animals be trying to steal all the posts. Steal the post. The wolves are like, arrest the post. Um, and a 64-year-old having to fight them all off. But she was just like an absolute badass and did. Um, so she's a really interesting character. I like it when that happens, where I go, really? And I'm like, holy crap, yeah, this person's really cool. Um, and and the fact that she was just so respected from doing that and turned people's perceptions on their head a bit, because obviously when she started, there was a lot of kickoff. People going, what's she doing that for? We've got a man descending, descending down, because I said gay sauna. Dun, dun, dun. That was quite a while ago. <laughs> Did someone say there's Andy coming down there? Caught him. Caught him. Oh no, you can see all my crap on the floor. All my mouse. All my mice. <laughs> it's a crazy rodent town in here at the moment. I could turn that again. They're the um I've been calling them the rental mice, the bottom mice. I'm looking after them for a friend. The rental mice. It's got nine mice, three pigs. Here we are. <laughs> yeah, Jess said, I hear squirrels tried to steal her bulbs. Yes. <laughs> it is fairly tidy, actually. Yeah, that's true. I just assume it's all the other side. <laughs> it's madness. Let's drink this. I've got more learning things to talk to you about. I've got the explanation of why I have clay. Oh, that's a good noise, wasn't it? Um, I've got some casts to show you, so stay tuned. Mm -hmm. I've got me drinking coffee. So uh, if you haven't, please do look at my Mary Fields. Uh, I've got the latest blog entry down there. I need more people to be looking at participating in this side of the community minis because there's lots of activity on the voting. But then the rest of it's gone a little bit tumbleweed. So I want more people, even if you're just saying, yeah, that looks wicked. I still want to feel like I'm talking to more than 10 people with it because it's supposed to be a larger community sort of thing. Um, so I've got that. And then I've done my little sketch of what, the mini, but I've changed my mind, um, partly myself and partly 
um, with the with the feedback. So I wanted to be more fighty looking because I was too focused on the post element. Um, but I think there, there could be a way better version that would be cooler for games and less obviously posty, but still shows the post stuff. You know, like having one of those big mail bags, but maybe like double wielding or something. So I'm going to resketch her up. Um, I've all, and it's not the last po blog post, it's the second last. Uh, there's also an interesting one about Marty's art, um, which I was getting a little... Little grump, not grumpy, um, frustrated because I need more people. I'm, I'm going to absolutely make it a rule now that when I post my blog post to Baggy's Cave or anywhere, that I'm not putting any preview image, because usually what happens is there's a link to where I've put all the text, and then the preview image, and I get a lot of comments based just on the image, where the answers to them are in the blog, um, and then it kind of diverts it a little bit. Um, so to clarify, if you're the um, images the first sort of crap, crappy sketches some of them aren't crappy I do get that I was, I was quite pleased with some of them once I got into it um they're just the designs for the for the sculptor and part of this is you learning how how the miniatures process works um it's just just me being an impatient teacher uh so they're the little sculpt the little sketches that the sculptor sees um we've got a really good like psychic communication where he can tell from my line work you know what i was going what i meant there what i was going for um and like yeah if i'd spent a few hours doing that first sketch of mary fields it would have been a waste of time because i'm now changing it entirely uh, so that's why they're kind of rough it's just to show where things go um and then they get sculpted but they also i don't just present him that image i'll present a whole bunch of reference photos. I can't put it all in the blog because I'm not sure of the copyright. So it'll sometimes be, you know, like someone's, it might be from a, a like an eBay or an auction site if someone's got a picture of, say, like a mailbag from that era. Um, I'm not sure whether I could put them on the blog. So uh, I end up just, you know, mostly putting my sketch and describing some stuff. So Alan gets all that and gets all my ram, all separate ramblings as well. Um, then it's sculpted. And then what Marty's been doing, because I think there was a bit of confusion about why I'd got Marty in. Um, I absolutely love Marty. Marty actually did our logo. Um, well, I did. The, uh, so the history of me of Marty doing my things, but better. <laughs> it's been long, long going. Um, so the Bad Squiddo logo was designed by me. And then at some point, uh, something like 2018, maybe? No. Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, I said, can you just do my logo, but better? <laughs> it looks so much better. I'm so glad I did. It looks so cool. Um, but I wanted, I just wanted a finalised version um, that incorporated the um, the sculpt changes. It's like an updated bit. Um, it'd just be nice and consistent to have along. I want some feedback on those cards as well. So you get collector cards. I don't want to know what people think because all of this is all extra cost. It's all stuff that's not covered by the actual money from the project. Um, and that's not, a, I'm not like going, you're not paying for it. <laughs> I, just, I just want the feedback, if, you know, if people say you don't, they don't like it or if there should be something changed because it's going to end up being quite a big investment over time. So I just really want to hear what, what people think of it before I do it. Um, uh, and yeah, Marty does very stylized sort of comic, comic-y stuff. Um, but I like it because it looks fun. And I, in my mind, that's that fighting back the people that, you know, kind of go, oh, it's all just like dour feminism and stuff. Um, and it's it's like, no, it's, it's interesting. So I like it to be fun and approachable um, and, you know, maybe maybe makes it more interesting to children as well if it's not just a really, you know, really heavy piece of artwork or something. Um, and I liked that I was looking through different collectible cards, you know, like those football cards and stuff. <laughs> but basically the community minis, I put so many hours into. Um, so that's why I end up getting sometimes a little bit grumpy. Um, because I just really want it to, to work. And I know it's it's still in its awkward teething stage as well, and it's not working as it as it was intended at the moment while I'm on the catch-up. Um, but if you haven't seen them all, all pre-ordered and you want to pre-order, um, obviously you're never um, obliged to have to do this. Um, never feel bad if you don't want the things or you can't buy the things. You just being here is awesome. God. Dave!
No, he's prowling. He's on his prowl. Um, yeah, could do a bit more uptake. The cards I've decided as part of the motivation to get people. The first hundred you get the card, but after that, no card. So you need the... Um, you want to collect them all, don't you? That's how I get you with my woman powers. Woo! Oh, Jez says they were singing your praises on On Tabletop last week. Were they? What did they say? What did they say? Uh oh, Dave Corley's in here. Shh, shh, Dave Corley's here. Act natural, act natural. So what else is on my thing? So yeah, go check out my Mary, um, Mary Fields research um, and all the other updates. Cause I keep, cause it's all over the place, the community minis, I, I get that. Um, the blog is where I keep it quite concise. So it's the community, it's communityminiaturesproject.com and there's a link below. Um, and I, I keep that for all the updates. So it's the one place that you can actually check in and see what's happening with it. And, and thank you, everyone who has, you know, has participated. And I moan sometimes and I go, there's not enough people, but the people that are there very much appreciate it. So thank you very much. Let me just have a little more of this. <laughs> uh, I was looking at the comments and I'm like, oh no, don't. <laughs> so the struggle getting beans to write your blog, I know it well. Mm -hmm. so it's been very busy because I've been focusing a lot on juggling three main things at the moment the My Last Sunrise Kickstarter getting that into shops the community miniatures research getting some good uh, project getting some good movement on that trying to get all that caught up so we've got the first six on the pre-order John's just finishing paint in the last two um, those pre-orders will be shipping this month um Oh, nice. Oh, cool. They mentioned the Joan when they were... Oh, nice, nice. Um, yeah, Ben's Ben's been really um, especially supportive since I set up Bad Squidow, actually. He's awesome. The others have been great, but usually if I see if this up and featured, I'm like, yeah, it's Ben again. Nice. Oh, that's really cool. Um, and the ghouls. So I'll talk about that. So there's quite three big projects that have been really heavily Eye of Sauroning across. Um, so let me just cross this out. And then amongst all that, I'm going to scan for. Scunthorpe. I've no idea what Scunthorpe's like. I just the British have a very miserable way of naming places. <laughs> I'm sure it didn't mean anything bad then. Has my internet gone off? It seems like it's slow. No, good. Um Scun yeah, Scunthorpe is where the 2021 gallery is, which is where the exhibition Art in Miniature is, uh, which you have to make sure you go to. I believe it ends at the end of October. And it's a, um, I've mentioned it a few times, it's the first um, time that war games, specific war games miniatures have been shown in an art capacity, but as war games miniatures as well. So just showing the art of war games, basically. Uh, war games, tabletop games, really. Um, so Louise Sugden was there yesterday running a, a child's painting um, painting demo thing, which just looked like the loveliest thing ever. Yay! Get in there. Um, so there's lots happening there. But I mentioned a couple of weeks ago how I was a bit grumpy because I was ill when it was all getting sorted. The interview with me... I have got this Joan Jett voice on the go. <laughs> I won't know till it's out whether it's got that sort of sexy graveliness or um, just just look rough, <laughs> sound rough. Um, see you later, Evil Ginger. Thanks for coming along. Bye. Um, but then I was I was just so ill. That was before the concussion as well, and. Uh, so I kind of just gave them a handful of minis and then when I was in a big downer around that time as well. That was before I went away. So I want to go away, get away from stuff. And I was like, oh, it doesn't represent me, you know, because everyone else kind of gone there, helped curate it and stuff. And I kind of thought, this, I've just kind of given them a handful of random minis and it doesn't, it's not the best it can be. And sometimes you can't, you do just have to do it. Not everything can be the best, but because it was bothering me, I thought I'm going to go there. The go to Scunthorpe. So I've chatted to their social media person, who seems really nice. And I've chatted to the gallery manager, 
who also seems very nice. Um, they're very excited to meet me. Yay! Uh, so I'll be going there in the week, hopefully just one day. I'm partly tempted to stay over because there's a museum there that I wouldn't mind checking out as well. Also, again, me just wanting an excuse to go somewhere. Um, but uh, what we're looking at. Um, what's I going to say? So I've cleared it with them and they've said there's a few bits that they'd like to change on my display as well. So I think they're happy that I want to come up. They've got the printer of all the special cards and all this. Um, and partly it's just that I've got these individual minis on clear acrylic with lights and it just, it's not very tied together. So, um, just, so I had this wild idea. Hopefully I haven't been too ambitious. But I'm hoping to just make some little um, like display bases for them. Just like put it on some card or something, you know, the old, just the little mound, um, maybe push some two peas in, um, just and put, you know, just put some texture paste on it, some flock, some tufts, um, just so it's uh, holds each little bit. So maybe I'll have a few that are kind of similar together in their own little bits. I'm not gonna scratch build any wild terrain or anything like that, um, but just to hold it together. And I want to do what I've been doing with like the, the Frankenstein photo I put up recently where it's mixing the scenics with the people to make some nice little scenes. So I wanna see what I can do with that. So I think part of tomorrow, probably all of tomorrow, I'm gonna to be fiddling around seeing what I can do that can then be transported to old scun, <laughs> old scun um, and put in. So yeah, these are hopefully just going to be slabs. I'm not going to do anything too wild. Might have a, put a few rocks in it or something. Um, it does feel nice. I'm sure I've used this years ago. Um, and I was terracotta because then if it chips, it's just mud under me. <laughs> um, so it should do the job. And then I'll be happier that it's, I don't know how many people have visited the exhibition or will visit, but I'll just be happier that it, it looks better. And so it's not an essential thing to do, but it will quieten that part of my brain, especially later on when there's going to be the... Dave, why... <laughs> you can't see him, he's just off cam. Um, when there's going to be the... Uh... What's the word? Premiere of that documentary as well. And people will be going there, um, all gloves, good call. Um, that I just want to be able to be really proud and go, this is mine, this is my stuff. Uh, rather than like, oh yeah, I've got some figures in my cabinet. So I think it's partly that, partly ego, partly ego. I haven't been in an exhibition for a while and I just want it to look really good. Um, so that's a bit of time out from doing all the other bits, but I think it'll be worth it. Um, it's gone for... Uh, what have I got here? Test casts. You won't be able to see them because they're small. I've got them. Scooped everyone out the way when I was eating last night. Oh, you can mix in some PVA glue to slow down the drying time and water is your friend. Thank you. I am hoping it will just be some like little mound bits. Sort of thing you could do with foam or whatever, but because I was in a rush and just want to do it simple, hopefully it'll do. Um, you won't be able to fully see them. But first we have the druid lady that I showed you a while ago. You can kind of see her there. Some rainbow glasses. Look at that rainbow. Uh, that's mad. <laughs> I've got an iridescent -y, uh bit on there and it's just rainbow projecting. I look a bit like the Joker now. <laughs> so we... <laughs> I'm gonna get it all on my face. Um, I've got this druidy lady, and she's got a little apprentice druidy lady to go with her. Um, I have this apple seller, and I have this other market trader. So they're a pair of market traders, and they'll go really nicely with my wristles, with the the wristle sculpted market bits and bobs. Anyone want to buy some apples? That sort of thing. Um, and yeah, once you see the details, they're really cool. So they're going to be wicked. Got those. Got some ghouls. Just proving we have ghouls of all different shapes and sizes. Oh, the, oh that rainbow. That rainbow just got me. Glad. Sorry, rainbow. I'm going to have to move you off there. Just cover it. <laughs> there we go. Um, 
yeah, mm, NPCs, tuppence a pound. It was the thing I used to enjoy as a child was when they'd go, pound a pound of tomatoes, pound a pound of tomatoes. This ghoul cast in one piece. Oh, my Lord. That is one piece. Eating a man, of course. These are like juvenile ghouls, so they are all different shapes and sizes. Teen ghouls. I was a teen ghoul. But this guy. Oh, put you down there. Oh, put you down there. And this guy. There's a few more ghouls. Um, there's only one more ghoul being sculpted, who is the queen ghoul. Well, we have the ghoul queen, though, so this is going to be the ghoul matriarch. Um, She's going to be a bit chunkier, but not hugely. Um, and she's just going to be a clear leader model. Um, so I've had lots of chats back and forth with Paul, but it's, eventually, it's inevitably his decision on the bits. Because um, I've given him a lot of info, but he's he's the ghoul master. So if there's any bits that he wants to override and change and stuff, he's free to do that, but he's going to keep me updated with it. So that's the last ghoul being sculpted. So I can talk about ghouls now. 27th of September. Gonna be a busy month, isn't it? So the 27th is gonna be the launch of the ghoul Kickstarter. I've started building it in the Kickstarter as well. I am just a machine at the moment. That's why I'm tired. <laughs> I'm doing everything. Um, getting that ghoul Kickstarter looking good. Again, I'm slightly concerned because it's gonna be so, um, so gribbly. I don't wanna put people off that were here for the Joan of Arcs and stuff, and then, <laughs> then they get all this horrific ghoul stuff. Um, so, but yeah, it will be ghoul central for a little bit, um, which I kind of like that I am working on community minis at the same time. So, there's something for everyone going on. So, you know, it's going, why is she doing ghouls? This is what we signed up for. It's like, but they're so cool. Cool ghouls. Um, so, there's going to be a whole bunch of ghouls. Um, the ghoul artwork, um, I'm going to show you. I don't know if I've got it on my phone, actually. I've had some really cool, cool ghoul artwork. There was a little bit shown in the, the latest newsletter. Um, it's awesome. I'm just going to have any other cool stuff on there. Cool ghouls. There's George that we met there. That's the church. Uh, so ghouls coming 27th. Uh, all Paul Muller ghouls. Um, deal on the whole tribe. Um, we also have a, a unique special um, scenic spundle, which is actually bits of different scenic packs, which we're kind of trialing on this as well. Um, but hopefully it's going to be fairly concise and just ghoulicious. Um, so we've got that cool kickstart come in. Uh, oh yeah, Amy's been painting. Um, I finally got the single person shelter painted. Um, it was with someone for ages that just wasn't painting it. Um, so I gave it to Amy and she has painted it stunning. Let me just see, she's tweeted it so I can show you on the tweet. Um, so with some paint on these, they look so stunning. Now hopefully I'll sell a lot more of them now because people are realising what they are. So it's the single person bomb shelters. So they come in a pack of two. So you've got the one with it. She's just painted them with different levels of weathering on them, really. So there's someone peeking out. Is the war over? Um, and that one's just closed. So you get the two. Um, and they're just cool scenics. And you could use them for a... Um, this wasn't the intention, but I, I'm not a Doctor Whoer, I'm afraid. Um, but someone pointed out they would make good... Um, uh, TARDIS could be like a tardis -y thing or you're going back in time and the TARDIS needs to um, <laughs> disguise itself I don't know um, she's done an absolutely wonderful job on them I can't wait to see them and start putting them into my little scenes, futuristic portaloos, yeah you go in there and go, oh no, no it was a bomb shelter, um, I don't know if they were used, if they were ever actually used or not Um yeah, they're, they're kind of emergencies. They're in, you know, in the middle of places. Uh, tard I, tardigrades. I think the plural of TARDIS is tardigrades. <laughs> or Fallout. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of use for them. Uh, they're one of the few um, digitally sculpted that we have as well. So they're by Rob McFarlane, who is a wicked guy. 
he did all those uh, plastic cowboys and cowgirls and all that for Great Escape Games recently. Um, but yeah, that peeping out. Look at that, it's so nice. Oh, I just think they're lovely. They've got one, I did it because they've got one in the um, Imperial War Museum. Uh, that's where I first saw it and went, what is this? This needs to be sculpted. Um, that's what we've got there. Hey, old librarian, has the bomb shelter minis and I've used them for a time lane in Doctor Who game. Yes, amazing. So I like having things having uses aside from what um, their intent, because then you buy more. <laughs> that's, that's the honest truth. Um, and it's good to see them around different places. What photo did I take before I left? I remember saying to mum, oh, we need to go, but let me photograph this. Um, I've been getting Beth, uh, Beth Anwin, to paint some alternate versions of some stuff, um, especially the ghouls, because I want to be able to have quite a lot of ghouls in a in a scene, so it's multiples of different ones. So she's painted some of these ghouls for me. See what I mean with the scenes? They look so much better photographed around stuff. So that's the setup I'd had for uh, Frankenstein. Um, but that's the ghouls, ghoul, ghoul charging little pet. That she's painted. <laughs> Look at that classic battery. Oh, my battery's always low. She's done some good gribble on there. Uh, I think they look really cool. I'm really happy with them. So they came in the week as well. So thank you, Beth. Got here. Oh, got that one. I forgot to show. I've got Amy painting, Beth painting. So that's the majority of what's been going on the last couple of weeks. Um, outside of this. Um, I've been I've been doing pretty well. I've just been in a mega hyper focus of of work um, and looking after myself a little bit better um, and seeing some friends. Um, I've I've actually been seeing friends. <laughs> so I had a lovely oh I need to show you this if you didn't see it already. Um, I had a lovely walk at Sherwood Forest on Wednesday evening, which I learned I didn't know that you could go out of hours because I, I thought they'd have like armed guards around the mighty oak. Um, but you can just go in, yes. Um, the mighty, uh, my major oak rather, because I always sing ground control to major oak. Where is he? Um, it's the oldest oak ever, or something. It's a very old oak. <laughs> I should know this by now. I know it's the oldest one in the um, country or something. It's a very old, it's a very old oak with so many scaffolding <laughs> and I always imagine it going, please just kill me, please. Um, but it's cool, there's lots of, you know, obviously there's the mainstream major oak but there's hundreds of really old oaks there because it's an ancient forest and it's like oh spooky in a good way. And like oh, I can see how all these authors just get entirely um, filled of uh, inspiration by going in these old forests. There's a, a big tree in Avery, which is apparently where um, where uh, Tolkien, that guy, uh, wrote a lot of uh, a lot of Lord of the Rings, because it's just like all these roots that are up over the earth. And I don't, never really checked if it's true or just, you know, sort of local legend, but you could definitely see it. It's, it's not what doubt worthy. And I saw this guy from afar, which absolutely terrified me. I thought it was carved. Look at that guy. It's horrific. Do you know where people get the idea of Ents from? It's not, it's just naturally like that. That's terrifying. The eyes follow you around. And then I feel like it's got a sort of spider body at the bottom. <laughs> it's just going around. So I'm glad it wasn't quite dark yet. Carol says, do I need ghouls? I have a huge backlog of squid omenies already. Time to use the old feminine witch charms. <laughs> you need ghouls. More ghouls. Gotta have the ghouls. Did it work? Did it work? There'll be some ghouls. You'll see them and go, ah, oh, go on then. You will. It's a lot. Um, so yeah, I had a nice little walk around Sherwood Forest uh, with my friend Becky, which was very nice. Um, and we had lost chat. I realised I, I mostly chat to people about plants now, but this is a good thing. This is good. Um, and we saw this uh, poor old shackled tree as well. Poor old shackled tree. 
I learned about forced veteraning as well. So the, <laughs> I just want to do my learning channel where um, because they stripped so many of the trees for shipbuilding timber, there's very old trees and there's young trees, but there's no trees in the middle. And you need that's because they were the ones used for timber. So there's a big gap in the ecosystem, maybe. So if the old trees die before the young trees have got older, it will cause it's a disaster. It will cause a lot of issues because, you know, different stages of the tree life cycle, different biodiversity and all of that. So they're forcing some of the younger trees to age prematurely by kicking them and stuff. <laughs> it's like um, doing the things that will cause the genes to change slightly to make them older. So imitating extra lightning strikes and where animals would rub against them and stuff like that. And that was fascinating to know anything about that. Um, to try and increase the age range or the perceived age range. There we go. Um, forced veteraning. It says something like, while these trees aren't that old, they, they're, um, it was like full of holes and knackered or something. <laughs> I was like, yep. <laughs> yep, I appreciate that. Um, I was just going through my gallery of things to show you before I go. Um, there's this. <laughs> what is this? What is that? I will show you the culprit. Let me just catch a pig. It's not who you think. Yes, you. You're the one. Oi, come here. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I've got you. I've got you. They've, she's got very long nails because it's um it's nail clipping day today. I'm just showing everyone Carol the criminal. This girl, Jill was correct. It's a disembodied tail, <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it? Somebody, oh yeah, somebody has been chewing all the tails of the ratties. I'm sorry, they're so long. They will get. They are getting cut today. They're getting cut today. Sort of summer growth of nailage. See up there. Somebody, some unknown little hedgehog, has been eating the ratty's tails, which is obviously not very good for her. Um, and that one was she was sucking on it like a straw, whilst there was a piece of carrot next to her, because she's a vandal. You vandal. You are a vandal. So now all the ratties have had to been detailed to protect the pigs. <laughs> <laughs> to protect this pig. So all the little ratty uh, cut plushies I've got, because they're Dave's favourite, they've all got no tails now. Um, <laughs> so they look really sad. They do just look like extra guinea pigs. Um, but it's because of Carol. She is the trouble causer. But she's very cute, so... Come on. I can't get up there. There we go. All right. You're eating all the tails. I'll put you back. Dave's up there. Dave wants some attention now. Um. <laughs> oh yeah, not actual rats. Uh, Dave loves his rat plushies. So you are a hedgehog. You are a little hedgehog. Little hedgehog. I'll put her back and I'll show you a horrific example. Nails later. Shield your eyes, especially if you have children. This is what I've had to do to the ratties. This isn't the standard ratty, this is a ratatouille rat. It's going to need its nose taken off as well. <laughs> Anything they start nibbling gets taken off, obviously, for their own safety. Um, so this is a different one. This is the ratty rat. But where I cut his tail off, it now has this, which is far worse. 
what is that? But no, the IKEA ratties are the ones that Dave loves. And they're extra safe because they're super safe for kids. But now this is the state of them all. They've, they've had to have the extra feet cut off and the tails, but they're not as bad. <laughs> but the, re the reason they're extra good for the pigs is because all the bits are sewed separately. So as soon as they nibble a bit, you can just chop it off without the whole thing unraveling. Fact of the day. Hello, Dev. Hello, Davey Do. Oh. So, yes, we did have tailgates. <laughs> tailgates this week. Um, Carol eating all the tails. She's just started out of nowhere. I had to change the um, part of the floor. She started eating that a while ago. She does get fed. So that is the <laughs> conclusion to the show. Um, so the week ahead, I will be attempting to make something with this so you get to see what I do. Uh, I'll be going to Sunny Scunfort and hopefully making my exhibition space look a lot better. Uh, as well as getting those mega orders out tomorrow. Uh, later today, well, I used to add the thumbnails, but I don't bother anymore, but that would be a good thumbnail shot. Um, I'm going to be planting some bulbs with these. <laughs> these torturous devices. Um, and I'm going to have some breakfast. So thanks for coming along. Um, I do, again, always appreciate it, especially when I ramble on for a whole hour. Um, and hopefully it's given you a bit more insight into the world of Le Squid. Um, is there any the comments there? Jill is never related to a tree, more than forced ageing. <laughs> yes, <laughs> relatable trees. Uh, yeah, so just keep an eye out. Again, if you have nothing to do after this, look below. <laughs> look down there um, and have a little read through my blog because I, I do all the little, all the research, all the writing. Um, and uh, you can learn a bit more about Mary Fields and the project there as well. So thank you all. You are wicked. Thank you, Jill. See you later.